Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to this build video of the Corsair uh, Hangar 9 Corsair 60cc aircraft. Um, if this is your first time here, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Also, when you hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And uh, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, please. And if you have any comments or questions, make sure you list them below. So. All right guys, so in the last video we got uh, basically the gear installed. It was a video all about gear. Uh, now we're working on the final touches. Um, maybe the final touches, but at least the next step. So where are we at right now? Just a bit of a summary. So the engine's installed, pretty much ready to go. Um, all the gears done, obviously we've done that. Uh, still working on the rear door, need to get that finished up. But um, the... Uh, oh, the other last thing with the gear here is we need to put those elastics that they talk about in the manual on the gear just the, to, to attach these doors onto the struts. That needs to happen. Um, and then we need to kind of work out the wiring scenario here and uh, get the gear controller mounted. So there's still a whole bunch of steps, lots of stuff to still do. But at least we're making some progress and uh, I feel like the build is getting finally closer to the end. We did buy some uh, some parts for the uh, to continue on here. So we got this nice little battery. I use this in my flash as my ultra flash as well too. So this is going to power the gear for sure, and I think the engine. Uh, just need to confirm that uh, we can use this on the engine, which I, I'm hundred bro ninety nine percent sure we can. Uh, I got some plugs and things like that, and also some other miscellaneous little items. Um, glues and high saw and stuff just to uh, continue on with the build so that's basically it guys working on this uh, I'll obviously update you as we uh, work our way through this okay guys the uh, tail wheel is basically done I need to do a little bit of adjustments here now just a, a side note for you um, the way this kind of worked out for me is the instructions show this wire going under the flat piece um, I found that it didn't really work that well if I went under. So I, and the reason for that is if you go under, the tail wheel starts to retract and pulls these doors in too close or too soon. Um, you can't really get that wire far enough out where the doors don't come in too soon. So I had this other one set up and was using that. It's totally different dimensions and stuff, but played around for it for quite a while. And then what I did was I, I flipped it to the top side of this flat piece and played around with the distance. So I made this little zigzag thing up that it's shown in the manual. And I just have to play with how um, the spacing on it, right? So if the doors close too quickly, you need to open up the spacing. So I just took it with pliers and opened it up a little bit. So works really well. I'll retract this for you guys. So you can see there's still a little bit of adjustment that needs to happen, but um, pretty, pretty happy with, with the way everything worked out. So that's fully retracted. Awesome. So pretty happy with that. Um, I think it definitely works great and uh, everything seems to work well with it. Um, it's all good. So there's a little bit of cleanup obviously and everything, painting and stuff to do on the tail, but um, happy with the way that, that worked out. So next thing to do guys, our next small little thing to do is I have to uh, route the line for the, the light back here. So I just gotta basically route it through the fuselage, need to figure that part out. Um, I think I talked about this before, but we don't have a lot of extra distance here and I don't have any more leads I could add on to this. So I might do that, but I'm probably gonna end up putting the light controller uh, close to this area so we don't have to uh, do a bunch of extra work. So anyways, that's uh, kind of the next thing I'm working on. All right guys, so I've routed the uh, the wire for the, 
the rear light just through the fuselage and I actually ran it along uh, one of the elevator tubes for the most part so otherwise it just goes through the different former holes I had to make drill one former hole there and just use hot glue to fasten it so it wouldn't move um, started to plug everything into the receiver kind of got some of the leads figured out here so the, these will be the connecting leads that go to the wing um, so kind of working on that stuff and um, so what I did next kind of the major thing was get the um, dummy engine installed so what I did with that and I probably should have shown you guys but what I did with that was I held so in, put the dummy engine in it's just sitting in there flopping around and then installed the cowl got everything lined up with the cowl holes and position the dummy engine because there's quite a bit of movement position the dummy engine so the opening would be centered and it's a little bit hard to do by yourself but got it kind of positioned held in place and then I just use medium CA and kicker just um, on the engine rods it's hard to see from this side but <clears throat> so where the engine rods would touch the cowl and just added some temporary glue on there so you can kind of see the CA maybe right on that rod um, so that got it in the right position and then what I did was I went around and siliconed the perimeter just with standard silicone uh, I was going to use dots but we're not really worried about nose weight on this so um, just glued the entire thing so that's got a cure but um, should work really well I hope and one of the things though too is the um, the back side of the prop actually will sit about here so this does need to get trimmed and there's really no good way to not have to trim this just with the way that that engines positioned um, so anyways that's got to be trimmed which is no big no big deal but uh, that's the dummy engine installed so thought I would get that done this morning so it can cure before we proceed with the uh, the other stuff all right guys next thing I moved to was the cockpit and the reason for that is before I could really continue with the front end, um, like I need to get the batteries installed next and the wiring for the receivers and things like that, um, I need to figure out my cockpit because I'm putting the switches inside the cockpit. So I think what I'm gonna do, my initial plan, is to have the two receiver switches kind of down by the guy's feet. Be able to pick that up. But. Anyways, the two receiver switches are going to be <clears throat> one's going to be on this side, one's going to be on this side, and I think the main gear, um, or sorry, the engine slash gear switch we're going to put right here is the idea, um, kind of in the bottom section there. So that's the plan. Um, basically, when that's done, um, and this is open <clears throat> it's going to look something like that so we should have fairly good access I mean um, the canopy will be open while we're starting it and everything can reach in there and it won't be any issues turning those switches on and off um, and it'll be nice and hidden and clean the stock location for the switches is on the side of the fuselage um, but I didn't want to do that, obviously, because having three of these on the side of the fuselage is going to be fairly ugly. Um, so, anyways, that's what our plan is with that. Uh, putting the cockpit in was fairly easy. Uh, the instructions cover it really, really well, step by step. So, the instructions, basically, you put the back plate in first, which is just the flat piece. Uh, glue it in with CA, which is done. Um, then what you do is you put the base in and um, it, it kind of has its own little home to sit in and then glue that in. So I used some CA in, in a couple spots just to get it tacked. And then on the underside where the, uh, the cockpit touches the wood, I just used um, silicone, like it says in the manual. Um, then you have to trim these side pieces a little bit, just have to do a little bit of sanding at the front and um, put the, the sticker on for the the cockpit uh, panel and then I glued these in I put silicone along the bottom and then I just used uh, some medium CA put it along the wood stuck that in place and then used kicker and it's uh, it's nice and solid so once that was all installed last night I put the uh, the seat in that was glued with silicone so there's a, a, 
a wood framed out piece on the base. I just covered that in silicone and then stuck it in place. Um, there's some on the back of the seat as well too, so I put that on, stuck that all in place, and it's nice and solid this morning. And uh, the silicone still has to cure a little bit, but it's done. And then gluing the headrest piece on, that's just done with CA. So that's pretty much the cockpit. There's not much to go, go in anymore um, or still, but there is the controller as well too, which you just uh, drill a little hole through the, uh, the base of it and uh, uses a nut to secure it. And so that's fairly straightforward. I'll probably do that after once I get my guy installed. And then um, our pilot for this build, he's got a servo head or a movable head with the servo lead coming out of the back. So my plan with that, um, this pilot actually came with a, a pillow or some stuffing inside his, I think this is maybe a parachute. Uh, anyways, I pulled the pillow out because it would have made him sit too high because it adds about an inch of depth. And uh, so there's the servo lead for his, his head. So my plan for that is um, drill a hole through the base of the seat and then through the base of the tub. And then that'll give good access for the servo line. And then you can see over here, um, I drilled a hole on the side of the seat. There's a matching one on the other side. And what those are for is the wire I use to fasten the pilots. So I just use um, safety wire, just standard stainless steel safety wire and um, put one piece on each side. And then the nice thing about the safety wire is you can bring it to the center, twist it up a little bit and uh, it's almost not even noticeable and um, it, and the pilot's removable. We don't have to use any zip ties or anything like that. And uh, I mean, in my mind, that's a fairly good way to do things. So that's what's happening here. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, continue with the cockpit and kind of get that all finished. I'm gonna have to do the switches before I do anything else, uh, just to make sure I have sufficient room to get in there. Um, so once the switches are done, then I'll get the rest of the cockpit finished and then I can flip the plane back over and uh, work on the wiring. Um, once the wiring's done, I mean, we're, we're getting really close, guys, to the end of this build. It's actually, it's exciting. So, I mean, there's still a lot of steps after this, but once the gist of the plane is put together, uh, then I can put the stickers on, get a match for the, the door and the paints and stuff, um, put all the stickers on, start doing the weathering, and she'll be ready to go. Okay guys, working on the canopy here, so I'll just go through the steps. They're all covered in the manual, so there's nothing really um, uh, that you can't figure out from the manual, but anyways, the uh, this is the front section that's been sanded, cleaned with rubbing alcohol. Um, the back section where the, uh, the sliding tabs will go, that's been cleaned on both sides. Uh, sorry, sanded and then cleaned, so that's done. And then what you do is you put masking tape on the top and the bottom of the slot. Okay, and the hole that the tab fits into, okay, there's the front and the back edge. So you draw a straight line, or you mark the, uh, the line at the back edge, the aft edge, right? And then what they want you to do is to install pieces of tape here. And the reason for that is when you put the tab in and slide it back, <clears throat> you want, so you can see the square, or the rectangle where the tab's been um, glued into the, the flat piece here. Um, you want this lined up with the line, okay? And then the reason for the tape is so this is fairly snug and, and is not gonna move when you go to glue the canopy on. So that's why. Uh, so I've done that to both sides. And again, it's all covered in the manual here. Um, so install the rear canopy on the front rails, fit the canopy so that there is a, that it's all the way forward in the front tracks. All right, so we're just going through the manual here and essentially what we're doing is we're gluing on the little tabs. So that's, that's the step we're, we're doing right now. All right guys, so pretty straightforward as per the manual. So this gets installed in the rails, the rear canopy section, you slide it all the way forward. Um, this front section gets glued on with canopy glue. So what I did there was had the front section used uh, Formula 560 canopy glue. I uh, installed this all along the edge. Once that was installed, I inserted it or put it on the airframe um, 
got it positioned. It, it pretty much locks into the right position because you've got the magnets and then the guiding pins, so it's pretty straightforward. And um, cleaned up this edge, and then I started taping from the, the top. So basically taped across the top here and then here on both sides. So we're gonna let that cure. And then um, I went and, and installed the, uh, or glued the rear tabs as well too. Um, it says to wait, but uh, everything was lined up so nicely I figured I would do it anyways. So you just peel this up, put a little bit of, of adhesive on the, uh, the white tabs, making sure they're still lined up properly with that line, and then put the canopy back over. Added this tape just, just in case, but the canopy sits nice and snug against them. And what I used to glue that was um, shoe goop. So I use this. They talk about five minute epoxy in there. Um, I use shoe goop instead. Should work really well. I hope. Fingers crossed. Uh, so that's it. So we need to basically let all that stuff, all that stuff cure, and then the canopy is essentially done. All right, guys. I've been making some really good progress on. Um, getting everything wrapped up here. So initially I started working on the batteries. We've got two uh, 2150 nickel metal hydride receiver packs. Those are buried in there and there's foam around them. And then this is the connection for the LiPo battery which is gonna power the gear and also the, um, the engine. So um, the receiver packs, the line goes down to the switches which, which are mounted in the cockpit. I'll show you those. And um, this, for the LiPo pack, um, heavy wire goes down and right here it splits. So I made a connector that uh, this connector goes to the gear in the wing and uh, the other connector goes to the switch for the, um, the ignition. So hopefully that stuff all works out good. Um, Wiring's basically done. So we've got a couple things here. These are the connectors that go to the wing. Yes, they're extremely long, but I just want it to be fairly easy to connect everything. Uh, looks like when you put the wing on here, um, everything's fairly easy to get to. This is the connector for the Robart um, unit. I think I'll just leave this the way it is. It should be plenty long enough, which is great. Um, I just need to figure out the connector for the lighting setup. So we've got two uh, lighting connectors going to the uh, going to the wing. So I need to figure that out what we're going to do because I don't want to use those small connectors and they're also not long enough coming from the wing. So I need to figure that out. That's not a big deal. Um, so what else do we got going on here? We've got all those connectors, that's fine. The, this Y is uh, for the turning head of the pilot, and we're also gonna power the, uh, the lights with the Y from one of the channels. So we've got the battery going into the battery channel, and then the battery also going into the AUX5 channel, and then the pilot's head going into AUX6. Um, all the other channels are occupied, and I'm more or less putting this in the video just in case I ever lose this information. So there's the list of everything. Um, yeah, so pretty straightforward. And uh, the second battery um, channel we could also use as another channel. So we do have one spare channel. A uh, couple things, put the GPS unit here in the, the foot area of the cockpit. And the reason for that is when the plane's all assembled, we turn it on, uh, we'll be able to see the light on the GPS unit, but it's really not gonna be too visible from the cockpit side, which is great. Um, you can kind of see the uh, you can kind of see the the switches and stuff down there. I'll show you from the other side. But one of the key things that I put in here was a connection for the gyro. So gyro programming and everything, you we can plug in the programmer right there, which is accessible again from the cockpit. Um, my goal in that, guys, is is once this. Uh, bottom part of this plane is on. I really don't want to have to open it up to access it unless something's something crazy is going on, right? So it's not something we're going to take on and off on a regular basis. We will have to take this cover plate on and off because uh, we're going to be disconnecting the battery uh, anytime we're done flying because the battery is going to be plugged into the gear controller 
um, which I, I think it's probably going to drain it, but um, and we need to take the LiPo out for charging. So this will be something that comes on and off on a regular basis. All the other switches are accessible from the cockpit, which is awesome. Um, so what I'll do is I'll flip the plane over and I'll show you guys the cockpit next. And I also have to dr drill the hole through the bottom of the seat for the pilot's head. All right, guys, so here's the cockpit setup. Uh, I'm still going to paint those... Uh, pieces of balsa black. Um, but basically we've got on the far left hand side marked with the R, that's a receiver on off switch um, and also charge port. The one in the center is a receiver on off switch plus a charge port. And the one on the right that's marked with a G and an I, if you're looking that way, is, uh, is the gear and ignition uh, on off switch and the charging for that lipo will be done out of the plane. Um, down in the center you can see the GPS unit in between the pilot's legs and then in between the GPS unit and the uh, the center on off switch you'll see that receptacle and that's for the gyro programming. So again that's there so when uh, when the wings installed we don't have to do anything from the underside um, all we have to do is everything's accessible from that point. So I think it worked out really well. Um, basically pilots ready to go in and be uh, fastened and uh, yeah, very, very happy with the way that that all worked out. All right, guys, we are very, very close to being done. Um, essentially everything's installed in the airframe. It's still a little bit messy, but there's really, really not a whole lot we can do to clean it up a ton. Um, and that's just with the way it's designed, but um, the wiring's all cleanly done and um, It's not going to be as nice as some of the jets that I built because you're never really looking in in this area anyways And of course access isn't great. So but uh, we're pretty much done. So here's the things that we have left to do uh, I guess since the last little clip um, installed the uh, Receiver the antenna those have all been installed uh, what else? Um, dun, dun, dun. Pilot's done. He's inserted. So he's been installed. He's upside down right now, but uh, his head works. He installed the stick as well, too. And uh, so the mix has been set up so his head uh, rotates with rudder controls. <clears throat> um, the last things I have to do of the main part of the build is... I'm going to use these Dean's micro plugs um, for the lighting quick connector. So one of these is going to be installed in the fuselage, one of them is going to be in the wing, and that's going to be our quick connect for the, the lighting setup. So we've got to hook that up to two of these uh, units right here. And then we've got um, two in the wing as well too, two wires for the lights in the wing. And um, so that's basically one of the primary next steps that we have to do. Um, hook up the elastics on the strut doors. So the, the doors that open with the struts, I haven't put the elastic around the strut yet. Need to do that, that's a pretty simple step. Uh, we need to install the prop, um, mainly just for testing. So that's gotta be done. We're not gonna install the cowl yet until we've, uh, we've run the engine. And uh, then we need to put all the decals on. So that needs to happen as well too. So. Um, I don't think I covered the dummy engine for you guys either. Maybe I did. Can't remember. Can't remember. So, uh, yeah, I did. I, I did cover that. So that's all taken care of. And um, install the decals. Yeah, so that's basically it, guys, for the, the primary portion of the build. So uh, once that's done, then we have to... Um, uh, oh, yeah, sorry. We've got the doors to paint as well, too. I forgot to include that. So that needs to happen as well too. Um, so we've got the, the rear doors to paint and then also the doors on the, uh, the wing section as well too. So we need to get a, a match done for this blue, this blue color. So we need to figure that out. But uh, once that stuff's done, then the primary portion of the build is complete. And uh, then we'll move on to weathering. So this plane should be basically done this week. It's Sunday night right now. And uh, we've got a, a new week coming up, so I should be able to probably get started on the weathering by hopefully Tuesday. And uh, that'll be a completely separate video as well, too. But uh, that's what we're doing, guys. So 
very, very close, very excited that we're close, and uh, so is the owner of the plane as well, too. So anyways, um, that's the end of today, but uh, the rest of this video, I'll chime in as we get these last couple steps done, and uh, we'll continue on and get this done. All right, guys, just working on the lighting setup here. So I've made an extension for the wing lights. So this will plug into the fuselage. This piece will be hanging out of the, uh, the fuselage, just like the other long leads that we've got for the wing. And this will be the connector here at the wing. So just a little tidbit for you guys with these Dean's connectors. Um, I like to use servo ends, so I've actually put servo ends on all these wires. They fit um, if you if you install them sideways, so the little tabby thing uh, that you'd normally see on the servo connector goes towards the side. Uh, they fit on there nice and snug, and they're really easy to solder, so you just, I mean obviously you just solder them on there, it's, I don't need to explain that, but you can solder those on really well. And then I like to use um, just uh, a glue gun. So like a craft glue gun, one of those hot glue guns, I'll show you guys, and just lay this all over the place and it makes for a really, really great connection that's uh, nice and solid. So just a standard hot glue gun works really well, so. All right guys, she's on her legs for the first time. Looks real good. So I'll have to uh, take this wing piece off at least a little bit um, one more time. Uh, basically all the connections are really good. We've just got the one connector for the Robart uh, linear actuator for the rear, which uh, I'd like to put some shoe goop on the connector just so it doesn't come disconnected. But uh, looks really, really good. Very impressed with this plane. So, looks awesome. Obviously, we've got all the finishing touches to do. So there's the cockpit, his sticks installed, the control stick, all the other items in there. Um, that rear wheel, I'm really glad that I softened it up. Now there's actually some give in the wheel. Before, there was no give uh, with that uh, super heavy Robart spring. But uh, looks good. Very, very impressive. Very cool plane. All right guys, so just uh, pulled out the airbrush and touched up the rear gear doors. So this was the hinges and then the piano wire mounting point there. So those are done. Um, so that's all good. So a couple things left that I need to do. Um, I need to figure out the painting on the main gear doors and also the rear gear doors. Anyways, gonna flick the power on here. Receiver, receiver, gear. <clears throat> okay, so if this should hopefully work all good. Look at that. Beautiful. Works good. Yeah, so quite a bit of quite a bit of sanding to do here. But uh, I'm probably gonna do a test as well too, so I'll mix that paint up, um, see what kind of match I can get. And if it's not close, then I will uh, have to see about getting a color match done on this. We'll see. See what happens. We're going to be happy with whatever we do, but uh, that's where we're at. Well, guys, I painted the doors. Um, the sheen on them is a little bit different because I used a flat clear coat. Um, so that's why it looks the way it does. We are going to be sanding the entire airframe uh, with, I think, 600 grit sandpaper. So um, that's why I did it with flat clear coat. And... Um, Anyway, so that the doors are done. Um, now I started painting the rear doors and it just was a complete disaster. So um, I started painting this and the paint was just peeling off and flaking. And I actually 
when I was getting this all ready, I, I sanded this down so the, there was a nice smooth transition from the old stuff. Like this is all stuff I peeled up. Um, and as soon as the paint uh, was getting installed, and it was just acrylic paint, it basically like you can see these sheets. Where these pieces now are just coming off in sheets, right? And uh, so very unimpressed with the uh, the prep that went into them painting this this door. Like there's a little bit of scratching and surface prep. If you look in the light, you might be able to see it, but it's pretty stinking shiny. So I've got to pull all the paint off now and uh, basically start from square one and uh, paint the rear door still. So still working on this. Okay guys, all the paint's been removed from the rear doors. Um, the easiest way I found to do that was just use an X-Acto knife and stick it underneath there and it just flake, comes off in flakes. You can see all of it down here. <clears throat> um, I, the doors have been sanded, cleaned with rubbing alcohol. And uh, what I did was, when I first touched up these areas um, with my airbrush, I actually painted the hinges. So now I've taped over the hinges and everything because that, that area is all blue and what I need it to be. So this is ready to receive uh, the paint and uh, I'll go ahead and paint this. All right guys, so a couple steps here. The cowl's uh, installed and the reason the cowl's installed is for the weathering that's gonna happen. Um, I installed the guns on both wings as well. Right there, so those will all be painted black. The radiator and intakes and stuff will be painted black. Um, the stall strips installed, I used shoe goop to put that in, and uh, so we're waiting for that to cure. Um, it only shows, it talks about having one on the right hand wing, 40 uh, millimeters from the outboard gun. So that's installed where it is, there's not one for the other side. And uh, the last thing we had to do was install the light on this side, so put the reflector on, that's just made out of foil tape. Um, this being the left wing is the red. Uh, LED and uh, the lens cover is installed as well too. I just use CA for the lens cover. I still have to glue the other side uh, of both wings but uh, that's done and then on this side the uh, lens cover has been installed as well too. That wasn't installed previously so um, so that guys I think is basically every single step in the manual. Those are the bomb releases, which we're not gonna do. And uh, that's it. So really the only thing we have left to do that I might wait until later, I might do it now, is to put those elastics on there. But honestly, I'm not even worried about the elastics. And the reason for that is uh, on my ultra flash, so that plane there, I'll show you guys. The front nose door here, um, it doesn't attach to the strut. It uses a little bumper, so it uh, it extends properly with the strut. But uh, I've got magnets as well, just holding it. But what happens when the plane uh, takes off and you put the landing gear up, the wind just pushes that up. And even without the magnets, it stays up. So um, honestly, I don't really see any reason to put the elastic around the strut leg, other than the manual says so. Um, so we're not going to do that for now, and what happens is with even with these gear coming up, sorry, even with the gear being extend, extended, uh, I mean you can push against this door and it doesn't interfere with the leg at all. Uh, I dri did trim this little piece here, the little tabby piece, because if the leg's compressing when it's extended, it uh, might hit the little tab. Uh, but where, but, but uh, where it is now is good, and then of course. You uh, you know you take off and you put the the landing gear up. This is just going to go up anyways. So, um, and the the air force is just going to keep this down. So, we'll see. I might put the elastic on there, but um, the the wind is going to keep it closed. So, um, that's basically the the gist of the build, guys. Um, so essentially, that's all the steps done that uh, that are listed in the manual. So. Okay guys, so that is the last video of the actual build. Uh, now the next video is gonna be all about weathering the plane. Um, so that's gonna be a, a, a fairly big step. Uh, it's gonna make this plane absolutely look amazing. 
Um, there's a few steps involved in that, so don't forget to check out the next video when it, uh, when it releases. But if this is uh, your first time on my channel, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And uh, when you do hit that subscribe button, don't forget to click the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And uh, lastly, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up because uh, thumbs up help the video. Um, and uh, that's it, guys. So thanks so much for tuning in. Um, don't forget to check out the next build video on weathering, and uh, we'll see you in that one.